Hello, welcome to Sonograph Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about gynecologic imaging. This is the third video in this video series with title of Ultrasonography of Intrauterine Devices or IUDs Part 1. The outline of this presentation include introduction, follow-up, IUD types, imaging of IUDs, determining the correctly positioned IUD with ultrasound, rule of 3D transvaginal sonography, pitfalls in diagnosis, report of normal IUD position, and final teaching points. At first, introduction. The intrauterine device or IUD first described for humans in 1909 by Dr. Richard Richter is the most popular reversible form of contraception today, with more than 168 million users worldwide. Worldwide, IUDs are the third most common method of contraception after tubal ligation and male condoms. Comparison of long-acting contraception methods revealed a failure rate for Cooper IUDs of less than 1% per year. Ultrasonography plays an essential role in evaluating IUD position and assessing for complications. Follow-up after IUD insertion Clinical follow-up of patients with IUD usually consists of pelvic examination and transvaginal ultrasonography. Ultrasonography is a cost-effective radiation-free method that is commonly used in the evaluation of the IUD placement as the arms and the stem of the Cooper IUD are echogenic. Moreover, follow-up after the first menses is recommended, since the first month is suggested to be the period with the highest risk of downward migration and spontaneous expulsion. For the above reasons, insertion and follow-up of IUD has been routine in general practice. Currently, transvaginal ultrasound is used increasingly to complete the gynecological examination in hospital settings. The routine use of transvaginal ultrasonography to monitor the position of the IUD after insertion has been advocated. There is much evidence that shows transvaginal ultrasonography to be highly accurate in monitoring the location of any type of IUD, no matter Cooper or hormone-releasing IUDs. Follow-up pelvic examination within six weeks of insertion is recommended to ensure visualization of the retriever strings, which should protrude through the external cervical os by 2 to 3 cm. IUD types. The most common type of IUD is the Cooper IUD. The Cooper IUD is made of a T-shaped polyethylene frame with barium sulfate added for radio opacity. Exposed Cooper on the arms and stem release Cooper ions which both increase the local foreign body inflammatory response and interfere with sperm mobility and viability preventing fertilization, as you can see in this image. Two polyethylene monofilaments connected to the stem referred to as retrieval strings allow for detection and removal. Cooper IUD is approved for up to 10 years of use. The second type of IUD is hormone-releasing IUDs. The available hormone-releasing IUD in the United States is the intrauterine level norgestrel releasing system famous as Mirena. It's also like Cooper IUD is a radio-opaque T-shaped device release of the embedded level norgestrol, a synthetic progesterone, leads to cervical mucosal thickening and suppression of the endometrium as well as the inhibition of ovulation in some women. It's approved for up to 7 years of use but has been shown to maintain efficacy for at least 7 years. Because of the endometrial suppression, Mirena IUDs are also approved to treat heavy menstrual bleeding in women using intrauterine contraception. A special advantage of Mirena is positive effect on menorrhagia and hypermenorrhea, both common menstrual problems in perimenopause women. 
the older types of IUDs, famous as the lips loop and stainless steel rings, can still be found in older patients. These ultrasound images show the appearance of these older types of IUDs in ultrasonography. For example, in China, stainless steel rings were popular before Cooper IUDs became preferred in 1994. Imaging of IUDs Imaging plays a crucial role in the management of patients with IUDs. Ultrasonography is the most common initial method of evaluation due to its cost-effectiveness, lack of ionizing radiation, and greater detail of pelvic anatomy. Three-dimensional reconstructions are increasingly being used, particularly in the coronal view, which allows for more careful evaluation of the arm positioning. In one study, all 28 cases of side arm embedment into the myometrium could only be detected on the 3D coronal view. Other imaging modalities can be accessory in selected cases. When the IUD cannot be seen on pelvic ultrasonography, abdominal radiographs can be used to evaluate IUD positioning as all IUDs are radio-opaque, no matter Cooper or Mirena. Positioning on abdominal radiograph varies with normal uterine positions, but the IUD should be located near the midline, low in the pelvis, as you can see in these images, and oriented with the arms superior to the stem. In cases where complications such as perforation or abscesses are suspected, CT or MRI may be a helpful adjunctive modality given their larger field of view. However, the associated radiation with CT and the cost of MRI limits their utility as a first-line modality for the evaluation of IUD position. Of note, both Cooper and hormone releasing devices are considered safe for up to 3 Tesla MRI, but stainless steel IUDs have not undergone any MRI testing. If an IUD is present on CT or MRI performed for indications other than the assessment of the IUD itself, it's important for the radiologist to evaluate for its proper position. For example, these sagittal and coronal non-enhanced CT images demonstrate a radio-dense IUD properly positioned within the uterine fundus, as you can see in these images. Determining the correctly positioned IUD with ultrasound The correctly positioned IUD is located in the uterine cavity near the fundus. The stem should extend toward the cervix and the two arms should be fully unfolded during insertion, reaching laterally toward the uterine cornua. The stem is usually easily identified on a standard 2D transvaginal ultrasonography as a linear echogenic structure. This image shows a Cooper IUD, but the Mirena IUDs are more difficult to identify than the Cooper IUD on 2D ultrasound. If a brightly echogenic interface of a Mirena IUD is not seen, one should look carefully for acoustic shadowing originating from the stem or arms to help in locating the IUD, as you can see in this image. While the arms of the Cooper IUD are also fully echogenic, the arms of Mirena IUD are only echogenic at the proximal and distal ends, with characteristic central posterior acoustic shadowing on transverse images, as you can see here. The distances should be measured at the sagittal section by transvaginal ultrasonography include distance between the tip of the IUD and the end point of the endometrial cavity, famous as IUD endometrium distance. Second, the distance between the top of IUD and the myometrium at myometrial endometrial junction. And finally, IUD fundus distance. The IUD endometrium distance seems to be the most relevant measurement, especially for Cooper IUD. Some articles presumed 5 mm as threshold for abnormal IUD position, 
because the maximum IUD endometrial license to ensure adequate contraception is still under debate and to avoid unnecessary IUD removals, some other articles defined a partial expulsion as an IUD endometrial distance of more than 10 mm. However, the maximum IUD endometrial distance to ensure adequate contraception is under debate yet, especially since T-shaped IUD tend to accommodate in their position during the first three months after insertion. Therefore, removal of all abnormally located IUD at transvaginal ultrasonography may result in a high number of unnecessary removals. Rule of 3D Transvaginal Sonography Two-dimensional transvaginal sonography has classically been considered the best technique to determine the intrauterine location of an IUD. However, more recent literature has shown that 2D ultrasound can miss problems such as IUD malposition, including an IUD embedded in the myometrium. Three-dimensional ultrasound has been introduced in the evaluation of women with IUDs and appears to be more clinically useful than 2D ultrasound because 3D ultrasound can locate the IUD in a volume which is more accurate. Therefore, 3D is preferable for visualization of both devices, no matter Cooper or Mirena IUD. Another limitation of 2D ultrasound is position evaluation of the IUD. Because the coronal view is not possible with 2D imaging, one must rely on the sagittal and transverse views of the shaft and arms to assess IUD position. The advantage of 3D imaging includes the ability to obtain a volume rendering in which the internal structures can be visualized by allowing the surface to be transparent. This sagittal TVS image shows inferior displacement of the Cooper IUD within the cervix because obviously the IUD endometrial distance is more than 10 mm, as you can see here. The transverse TVS image shows the arms of the IUD extend into the cervical wall. But this 3D coronal sonogram better demonstrates both arms embedded into the myometrium. These images are related to a 24-year-old female with menorrhagia and unsuccessful attempt at IUD removal. Finally, the IUD was subsequently removed under anesthesia. Consequently, the entire IUD can be shown within the inverted triangle of the endometrial cavity and positioning can be definitely documented, producing a coronal view of the IUD that shows the entire device and its position within the uterus may help to explain pelvic pain and bleeding in patients with malpositions IUD, as I explained in previous case. Pitfalls in diagnosis. Occasionally, one may encounter endometrial calcifications that simulate an IUD, but the discontinuous nature of the calcifications should generally help prevent confusion. Another pitfall that we must pay attention to it is the string of many IUDs is brightly echogenic and should not be confused for the shaft. In this sagittal TVS image, a string of the IUD is seen in the cervix, but IUD was normally positioned and not seen in this image, so care should be taken to not mistake the string for the IUD itself. Rarely, one may still encounter a patient with a lips loops IUD. This will look like an interrupted metallic device in the endometrium on sagittal imaging, and with 3D reconstruction, the multiple continuous curves of the device are readily visualized, as you can see in this image. Report of normal IUD position. Based on many articles guidelines, the IUD users have regular follow-up visits six weeks after insertion and later on six monthly. For report of a normal IUD position, we must at first record the name of the patient, IUD insertion date, type of the IUD. Clinical indication, routine follow-up, post-IUD insertion, and the patient has no any compliance. Modality, transvaginal ultrasonography. 
In finding, we must record that the uterus is ante or retroverted and normal in size and echo texture. A T-shaped intrauterine device is noted within the endometrial canal. The IUD appears intact with the stem aligned along the longitudinal axis of the endometrial cavity. The measurements must be recorded. The IUD endometrial distance, IUD myometrium distance, and IUD fundus distance. Both horizontal arms are symmetrically placed at the uterine fundus. Posterior acoustic shadowing is present consistent with a Cooper containing device. Or we must record this continuous posterior acoustic shadowing is present consistent with a hormone releasing IUD. No evidence of myometrial perforation or displacement. Endometrial strip is not clearly visualized due to the device but appears undemarkable around it. No free fluid or adenexal masses. And finally, impression, normal intrauterine position of IUD and no evidence of malposition or complication. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. Worldwide, IUDs are the third most common method of contraception after tubal ligation and male condoms. Ultra sonography is a cost effective radiation free method that is commonly used in the evaluation of the IUD placement as the arms and the stem of the Cooper IUD are echogenic. There is much evidence that shows transvaginal ultrasonography to be highly accurate in monitoring the location of any type of IUD, no matter Cooper or Mirena. Three-dimensional reconstructions are increasingly being used, particularly in the coronal view, which allows for more careful evaluation of the arm positioning. In cases where complications such as perforations or abscesses are suspected, CT or MRI may be a helpful adjunctive modality given their larger field of view. However, the maximum IUD endometrial distance to ensure adequate contraception is under debate yet, especially since T-shaped IUD tends to accommodate in their position during the first three months after insertion. Therefore, removal of all abnormally located IUD at transvaginal ultrasonography may result in a high number of unnecessary removals. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.